Okay, I'm not sure how well you can see. I'm a little far away, but we're really, really close actually. If you can see those three smokestacks right above my finger. That's Ashkelon. That's the city of Ashkelon, right north of the Gaza Strip. They've been hit like crazy throughout this whole war. All the time, Sevadom going off. I'm not sure again how much you can see, but just, just uh, to the left of those smokestacks is a wall. That is part of the Erez crossing that goes into the Gaza Strip, one of the places that goods uh, move into the Gaza Strip. And uh, basically right now we're looking at the northern Gaza, uh, Gaza Strip, the sun setting over it. And uh, this body of water over here is uh, kind of like a collection pool uh, created by the JNF to bring water to this area. But beyond that, all those buildings, all those homes, everything that I hope you can see, um, that is Gaza, that is northern Gaza, that is uh, part of a place called Beit Hanun, which has been in the news a lot lately as a place of heavy, heavy fighting between the IDF and, and Hamas. So we're here less than a kilometer away from the Gaza Strip. Um, looks like a very peaceful day out here, but we know that the fighting has been very, very intense and very, very fierce, and we just bless our soldiers that they should do their task quickly and well and get back home in peace. Lish Shalom. Here in Steyrot, at the entrance to Steyrot, we have a bus stop that looks like many bus stops here in Steyrot. This bus stop doubles as a bomb shelter, like we've seen in other places. If someone's waiting for a bus and a Tseva Doma goes off, they need a place to go to. Right? And they can just literally step inside and they're totally safe. So guys, here, uh, just on the street here in Steyrot, uh, is uh, another bomb shelter. Just in case people are here in this area and a rocket falls or there's a Tseva Dome, all over Steyrot you have bomb shelters so that within 15 seconds if you need to run for your life you have where to go. Right, Hamas sends over these rockets and many of them are definitely compared to our rockets very unprofessional and can't cause much damage right, but as we talked about it's really about the psychological damage that they're trying to, to cause to the residents of the south and now Jews is really is all over the country right, and uh, the way we respond is we respond that we'll build whatever we need whatever it takes to help people have as normal of a life as possible. So they send their rockets and we build for life. They send their rockets for death, we build for life to help the people of Steyrot and all over the south live as normal of a life as possible. So just another bomb shelter in the middle of a park here, right next to like a community center. Here's a bomb shelter made by like these like big concrete slabs. People painted it to look a little nicer, but basically it's another reality of the situation here in Steyrot that you need bomb shelters literally everywhere. So this is the chemical plastic factory in Steyrot, in the industrial area that was hit by a rocket a few weeks ago. You can see all the burnt marks on the side right, that created an, an enormous fire and basically destroyed this entire factory. So many people say, you know, these rockets, they don't hurt, they don't damage, you know, they fall into open places. Right, but that's not, not always the truth and all it takes is a few not to land in an open space to land in a populated area, whether it's a house or a building or a factory like this, to cause incredible damage. And we know that uh, Hamas has shot over 12,000 rockets already in this latest round, in this last, in this war that we're in still now. And this is the result of one of these rockets that landed here in Steyrot. So just across from the chemical or the plastic factory where you can still smell in the air the smell of burnt plastic. Here's another bomb shelter. As we said, they're everywhere, all over Steyrot. You go inside here. I God forbid, there's a Tseva Dome. You can go inside here. And here, <coughs> you're inside this small space. Thick concrete walls. And you're totally safe. Right, and on this one, there's a message of hope, a message of peace. No more rockets, please. No more rockets. Right, people want to get back to their normal lives, but the people in Steyrot, I forgot what it means to have a normal life as they've been hit with rockets for the past 12 years at least. Alright guys, here we are in Steyrot. Uh, we're at the JNF built indoor playground for kids, which is the only kind or the only of its kind in the entire world. This is an indoor playground where kids can come and be totally safe even through red alerts and everything else. It was created, constructed, built in a way where it itself is a miklat, is a shelter, is a bomb shelter. So kids can come in here, have birthday parties, go play, have fun, be a kid again, 
And even if there is a tseva dom, even if there is a red alert, they just have to take a few steps into one of the side rooms and they're completely safe. This was built by the JNF, millions of dollars uh, it cost. And uh, it's an incredible thing, so we're going to go inside. Alright guys, this is the Mishakia, this is the play area inside. There's tons of kids here today. I've never been here with so many people, so many kids here. Obviously with the situation, this is the safest place in town for kids and families to come. And you see how packed it is. The, they don't really need uh, families to pay money, but they do charge 10 shekels. A child just, you know, they want people to feel like, you know, Alan, Shalom, Anashmachi. They want people to feel like, you know, they're not like, you know, like, uh, you know, people feeling bad for them and giving them handouts. So the 10 shekel fee per child is just like a, is a symbolic fee. And of course, if anyone can't um, afford it, they're, of course, they're let in for free. All right, so this is the main area. And in here, you see, if, God forbid, there's a Tseva Dome, and obviously there have been many, this says Mirchav Mugan. This is the uh, bomb shelter. And you come in here, just a few steps away. I'm not sure how much light is in here. Here we go. A few steps away, they can come in here and continue playing, continue hanging out. And uh, this is a whole area. I'm not sure what you guys can see because there's not really much light in here. Here we go. Let's see. Um, this is a discotheque. And people can continue and, and, and play and, and be safe. This is the bomb shelter over here. They have many of these rooms like this. One is a soccer field, one is other things. And, and look what you have over here, right just behind the, the DJ stand, you have a Kassam rocket, a used Kassam rocket um, on display, right? Reminding people of what goes on here, right? Alan. Here is like kind of like a Chabad central headquarters, right outside of Sarat, right outside of Stero. They have all like the, what they call like these mitzvah trucks that go around and help people do mitzvot to fill in all oh, Shabbat candles, all kinds of other things and here's kind of like their like main uh, kind of parking lot for all these things. You can see tons and tons of drinks and other things that they're going to be giving out in the next few days uh, to soldiers uh, who are stationed, the tens of thousands of soldiers all around the Gaza Strip. And it's amazing because what you're seeing here is every kind of Jew is out here helping out. Every kind of Jew, every kind of Israeli is coming down, secular, religious, left wing, right wing, it doesn't matter. People just want to help. They want to show support for the soldiers. They want to show support for Steirot and, uh, and the other residents of the South. And it's a really incredible uh, show of unity of the Jewish people what's happening here. And this is what Israelis do on the Gaza border. They come, they support their Chayalim, our Chayalim, Am Yisrael's Chayalim. Again, just about a kilometer from the border. We're here hanging with the soldiers, playing music, davening, bringing joy. These soldiers are so holy, so holy. We thank them so much. Thank you so much. All of us here in Israel, especially the Chaim Lozim, means so much to get all this stuff. That you guys are supporting us. And we love you and thank you so much for everything. So this is the train station in Steirot, right outside of Steirot. This is a new addition to the Israeli train system. Just about a year ago, they opened this train station up. It looks like basically more or less any other train station in Israel though it is very very different the entire thing is basically like one big bomb shelter that big building over there where most of the light is coming out of that whole thing is Mugan totally protected bomb shelter bomb proof and um, this project cost millions and millions and millions of dollars to make this what it is today unfortunately it is still closed right now and has been for the past few weeks during the war obviously just for extra safety precautions but basically if uh, passengers were here and a rocket was falling, they can go into the safe area right over there inside the building and be perfectly fine. A rocket could fall on that building and be perfectly fine. And uh, again, like we said before, this, this is Israel's answer to that piece of land just beyond those trees, the Gaza Strip, and the ones who rule, rule it, Hamas. They want to keep firing rockets. They want the, the, the residents of Steyro to leave, but the truth is, if you can only see, you can't really see from here, 
there's an incredible boom in building in real estate right now in Stero. And it doesn't make any sense because you would think that Stero is the kind of town that people would want to run away from, leave from. And in fact, when you go to Stero and you talk to people, you realize that their families are already living there for a couple of generations. People don't want to leave. They want to stay. They're getting, they're growing up, they're getting married, they're having kids, and they're raising their, their families in Steyrot because they believe so much in what Steyrot stands for. On some level, Steyrot is a symbol for the entire country, right? We're not going to move. You can keep sending over your rockets, we'll build bomb shelters. You send more, we'll, we'll build more bomb shelters. We'll build, we'll build bigger and better bomb shelters. We'll, we'll make a whole city, basically. The entire city of Steyrot is basically like one big bomb shelter. Do we want that? Of course not. Do we want people to live like that? No. Do people in Steyrot want to live like that? Of course not. Right? But it's the reality that we are forced to and uh, have to deal with. And we'll basically build whatever we need in order to stay here uh, in our land in general and this piece of land in specific. So Steyrot... It's such an incredible place, an important place, and the people here are so strong. And uh, we just bless them and all the people in the South and all the soldiers fighting this war. They should be safe and protected. The mission should be done uh, completely and quickly. And um, we should really, really have peace in this land. Please, God. Amen.